So can the Cincinnati Bengals finally win a playoff game? Is it possible? Is it? It's a simple question, but obviously hasn't been so easy to accomplish. Four straight playoff appearances, four straight early round exits. No team had ever lost four consecutive opening round playoff games until the Bengals last season. Yikes. And most of these games have been clunkers. 26-10 to Indianapolis last year. 27-10 to San Diego in 2013. A pair of losses to the Houston Texans. 19 to 13 in 2012 and 31 to 10 in 2011. That's a point differential of 103 to 43 in favor of the bad guys. They've been getting beat by an average of 15 points per game. And nobody gets more blame than Andy Dalton, and rightfully so. I don't care what you do in the regular season. If you can't get it done in the playoffs, then why the hell are you getting paid 96 million freaking dollars? Dalton isn't the only one who struggles in the playoffs. Matt Ryan is 1-4, and four, and Tony Romo is 2-4 and four in the month of January, but there's a huge difference because Dalton straight up melts down. Look at the difference in his numbers from the regular season to the postseason. He's thrown for over 3,300 yards in each season. He has 99 touchdowns and 66 interceptions, has a completion percentage of 61.6, and a passer rating of 85.2 during the regular season. In the postseason, however, Dalton has thrown for a measly 218.3 yards per game, has the completion percentage of 55.7, has thrown just one touchdown and six interceptions, and has a quarterback rating of just 57.8. It's beyond time for Dalton to take the next step. It really is. I mean, you gotta get it done at some point. Like division rivals Baltimore and Pittsburgh, the Bengals want to draft well, develop, and re-sign as many of the core players as they can. So basically, it's been the same crop of players the last four seasons. Some key players will be coming back from injuries. That cost them a nice chunk of the season. Marvin Jones, Tyler Eifert, Vontez Perfect, and A.J. Green, who really didn't look right all season long. So before I go position by position... I've got all the rankings below, all the unit rankings, the player rankings, numbers by each one. So make sure you check that out in the description box. All right. My honest opinion, I don't think Dalton's that good. I think he's trash. Don't know why they gave him all the money. I thought it was a mistake. Oh, well. You know, that man. Uh, he commands the playbook well, but he's got mechanical flaws. His hack accuracy on his deep ball is lacking. He makes poor decisions. He had five games last year with multiple interceptions and now has 15 of them during his career. Those just aren't the traits of a $96 million quarterback. He's not even average. There's over 20 quarterbacks I'd rather have than Andy Dalton right now. He's holding the Bengals back from being a legitimate Super Bowl contender. Alabama standout A.J. McCarrot is the backup. He missed most of the season with a shoulder injury last year. All right, moving on to the running backs, because I do love the tandem that they have in Jeremy Hill and Gio Bernard. Offensive coordinator Hugh Jackson took the ball out of Dalton's hands more than former offensive coordinator Drew Jay Gruden did, and you know that duo is the main reason why. Hill is the complete package of size and speed. I, I had him as my... Ninth rated running back in my rankings. He's, you know, the most underrated one in the league right now. He ran for 1,124 yards, 5.1 yards per carry last season. He's got vision, patience, good burst, solid breakaway speed for a man his size. I mean, when, when Bernard went down with hip and clavicle injuries, Hill was named the starter and never relinquished it. Hill's emergence allowed Jackson to use Bernard as the scat back, as a man to use in space. He's quick, elusive. And I love that spin move he has to make people miss. A.J. Green's always been a guy. I, I usually pencil in my top five at wide receiver. He's been as high as number two, but I got him at number six this year. Uh, granted, Dalton isn't doing him any favors, and, and neither are his fellow wideouts because he's consistently double teamed. Missed three games and parts of two others last season due to toe and bicep injuries and was limited to 1,041 yards on 69 catches. He then missed the postseason due to a concussion. 
He has excellent size, insane leaping ability, and great hands. Mohamed Sanu hasn't taken the leap forward yet like I've expected him to. I loved him in college at Rutgers, but he drops the ball too often to be you know, complimentary to Green. He had a chance to showcase it last year when Marvin Jones went down, but didn't step up as much as I would have liked. Jones missed all of last year with foot and ankle injuries. He's, he's always been Green's uh, big play compliment. 2013 first-rounder Tyler Eifert looks to have a breakout season, starting in the place of the departed Jermaine Gresham. He missed all of last year with a dislocated elbow. Tyler Croft was taken in the third round out of Rutgers. Andrew Whitworth. He always gets lost in the shovel among the top tackles in the game. Well, it's because he's in Cincinnati, but Whitworth is coming off an outstanding season where he led the NFL in fewest quarterback hurries, hits, and sacks allowed. He didn't give up a single one all year. He'll just eight hurries and one quarterback hit. He's not the most athletic. He's very stiff at times, but once he, once he latches on to a rusher, they rarely break free from him. He has a strong punch, which knocks rushers off balance. As a run blocker, he uses his power to drive defenders backwards, and he really understands angles and leverage. Right tackle Andre Smith had a down year, but has shown flashes of why he, has, why he was the sixth pick in the 2009 draft. He just hasn't quite, uh, quite gotten over the hump yet. Uh, guards Clint Bowling and Kevin Zeitler are underrated, and I also like uh, center Russell Bodine. Bowling has bulk and strength, while Zeitler plays with good balance, is smart, and very consistent overall. Michael Johnson returns at defensive end after a failed stay in Tampa Bay. I, honestly, I like Johnson. I, I don't care about what he did with the Bucks. He has size and speed for the position, evades offensive linemen, and makes plays in the backfield. At the other defensive spot, end spot is Carlos Dunlap, who's extremely underrated. He, he's a complete player, a good pass rusher, and can stop the run. He doesn't do anything explosive, but he uses his power to bull rush and his length to, uh, length to, to his advantage in the run game. Geno Atkins has been the top dog on prior defensive tackles list I've had before tearing his ACL midway through the 2013 season. They say that it takes at least two years to return to form following these injuries, so we'll see if he can get anywhere close to his 2012 type of production when he tallied 12 and a half sacks, which is unheard of for a three-technique defensive tackle. During that season, Atkins had a great first step in unparalleled quickness. He just simply hasn't returned to that form. As a run stuffer, Atkins plays with great instincts. He uses lo his lower body strength to his advantage. D'Amato Pecco is the other starter at defensive tackle, but honestly, he hasn't been good in years. I, I, I don't know. Uh, not a fan. I, I'd go with Pat Sims over him, but you know that's just me. Wallace Gilberry and Marcus Hunt provide decent depth at defensive end. Fontes Perfect is coming off an injury-plagued season dealing with concussions and knee injuries and is back on the pup list to start the year. He'll miss the first six games of the season. He played just five games after posting 171 tackles in his sophomore campaign in 2013. He possesses natural ball-hawking instincts in the run game, plays it very instinctively, and cuts through traffic. He's strong, can take on blockers, and shed them to get to the ball carrier. He can also play in space and... Uh, close the rundown as a hitter. He's one of the most violent ones in the league. Because he's so effective against the run, Perfect isn't asked to pass rush a lot. He has the closing speed, but tends to get walled off by the athletic blockers. In pass coverage, he gives up his fair share of plays, but is smart and gets himself in position to make the play. Emmanuel Lamore was solid last season as, as the strong side linebacker. Ray Maluga will start again as the middle linebacker, but honestly, I'd give that job to Vincent Ray. Uh, Maluga got a new three-year deal this offseason. Didn't really understand that one. Uh, Ray gets overlooked every single season, and, you know, I, I think he's a starter in this league. He just hasn't had a shot to really, you know, be that full-time guy. Cincinnati also brought in A.J. Hawk, who will start in Burfick's spot until he returns. Leon Hall and Drake Kirkpatrick are a solid set of corners. Hall is a really solid cover guy, but has regressed a, regressed a bit over the years due to injuries. Kirkpatrick is aggressive and skilled when the ball's in the air. Darquez Denard was a first-rounder last year and will eventually take over for Hall while Adam Jones returns for another season. George Iloka and Reggie Nelson are the safeties. Uh, receivers caught passes just 38.7% of the time against Iloka, which led the NFL among safeties. 
Reggie Nelson had a bounce back year with 95 tackles. Mike Nugent handles the kickoff, du- well, the field goal duties. Kevin Huber, the punting. Brandon Tate will return kickoffs. And Adam Jones, the punts. All right, prediction time. You know, I, I know the Bengals have made four straight postseasons. But, uh, you know, I, I got a bad feeling about this year. Um, defense not as good as, as it has been. It's It's been one of the better units in the league. But, uh, you know, I, I, I think they, they're they kind of regressing a little bit. And, you know, if, if I was Marvin Lewis, I'd be fearing for my job. I, I don't know if he returns next year. It it might be you know it, it might be close close to blow up time if you know it's it's another uh, well if it's a bad season if they don't make the postseason it's it might be blow up time uh, you know I I, I don't know um, I'm not I'm not big on this team man I, I'm just I, I'm not feeling this team I don't know is it just me Bengals fans help me out tell me why they're a playoff team this year tell me why they can win a playoff game. I got no confidence in them. I like Jeremy Hill. I like Gio Bernard. I love that running back situation. But for me, it's the defense. The defense is just not as good as it was. I, I am a little bit concerned that you know that the, the secondary is not getting younger. At least the cornerbacks aren't. Burfick's going to miss the first six games. Michael Johnson's a question mark. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I got 8-8. Eight eight. That's what I got. Eight and eight, missing the playoffs. Marvin Lewis is going to be gone at the end of the year. So that's my prediction for the season. I'm out of here. I'm Adrian Fedq. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at the Bitter Birds. Later.